I have to turn this on? Or Is this on? Maybe I need to talk into it like this. Hello, hello everybody. Good morning. Ooh, that sounds like it's on. Ooh, it got quiet. <laughs> Are we rolling, Jeff? Yep. Ooh, yay. All right, first things first. Everyone say good morning. Way, way, gotcha. <laughs> okay, so welcome. Um, let me see if I can get this out of the way. Um, thank you everybody for braving the snow and for getting here safely and um, for being here to uh, celebrate our community and um, the 20th anniversary of this event. Um, 20 years, the, the first official one, we'd had a few before but they were very, very small. Um, you know, just uh, what we were called buddies back in the day, and we had some meetings with the academic coordinators and the help desk and and uh, the IDs. And um, but the first official one that was actually called the summit was in 1999. Um, so 20 years is a long time. How many people um, have been here to the summit for more than 10? Let's say. Yes. All right. So um, I really. Um, uh, love being here uh, at this event with you all. It's one of my favorite times, I think, for all of us uh, to be able to get together and to um, see each other face to face and, and chat about the things that we are uh, most interested in terms of online teaching and learning. Um, so I, um, we're going to do some special stuff to celebrate the 20th anniversary. Um, we have on the back table there, you will notice that there are some collector's items. And um, we have some uh, selected giveaways um, that uh, we're going to be uh, doing. I'm going to be doing actually in a second. And, um, and some special touches uh, through the next couple of days uh, to kind of, um, you know, celebrate our 20 years as a community. Um, so I want to do the first giveaway. Um, so uh, who, for whom is this the f first summit? Oh my God. <laughs> okay, of those who raised their hands, who is closest to 20 years old? Yes. <laughs> All right, so this is a book by Michelle Miller, who was a keynote speaker a couple of years ago, and it's a signed copy of her book, Minds Online, and I hope that you will enjoy it. And your name is Paula? Paula Blue, and where are you from? From MCC, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so um, who, uh, at each table there are three John Seeley Brown books. So I'm giving those away um, to whoever is the closest to 20 years old and whoever is the furthest from 20 years old. And if they have disappeared already, you can go to the back table and pick one up. And I think there were three, supposed to be three on each book. So for those of you who weren't here last year, John Seely Brown was our keynote speaker last year, but he was unable to make it because of a health uh, issue. And so he sent a box of books. Um, so I'm, I'm sharing them out with you all. So there are additional books if you really want one on the back table. So you can pick one up um, if you really want one. Okay, um, 
So, um, I have, who has a 20 month old child? Months old? Closest to 20. This is a power cord. Okay, here's your power cord. Anyone else? No, I have two of them, so here, you can, you can both have. Okay, so um, we're going to do so, a couple of other fun things um, later, and I want you to go and check out all of the collector's items that are on the back, and know that we do not want to take any of those back with us. So whatever's there, we would love you to, um, to keep one as a keepsake of past summits. Okay, so um, I'd like to thank um, all of the community participants and the presenters who are here. Is, can, if you're presenting today, can you raise your hand? If you're presenting any time during the summit, can you raise your hand? Okay, I just want people to see, you know, some of who the presenters are. Um, I know we will be recognizing uh, some online teaching ambassadors uh, this uh, uh, tomorrow actually and so if you are an online teaching ambassador would you please raise your hand yay ambassadors for thank you for sharing your enthusiasm <laughs> ambassadors are selected by their campus as folks who are exemplary or and or um, willing to share their enthusiasm uh, for online teaching with their community and with the broader SUNY community. So I really thank you for coming here and for sharing your enthusiasm with all of us. Um, we also have students. We have a student panel. And so I'm wondering who the student online students are who are in the room. And if you're not on the panel, that's OK if you are an online student. And you'll notice my hand is also up because I'm taking an online course right now and it's not my favorite. Um, <laughs> oops, I just did that on video. Um, OK. Um, so we also are giving out some effective practice uh, awards today. So who are the nominees who are in the room? Nominees for the effective practices. I know you're out there. OK, awesome. Thank you for submitting your, um, uh, your effective practices. And Aaron later is going to talk in more detail about that program. And um, I just want to congratulate all of you for your effective practices. Um, I also want to recognize the provost staff that is in the room today. So if you guys could raise your hand so folks can know who you are. Um, we're very, very pleased to have you here sharing this event with us today. Um, Open SUNY staff, can you please raise your hand and let folks know who you are? Awesome. So if you're new, like a lot of people raise their hands that this is their first summit. If you're new and you are interested in learning more about some of the things that we're doing, um, you know, in the Open SUNY office, please, um, you know, reach out to somebody, you know, one of the staff that's here and chat with them. I hope that you will take lots of opportunities to network, not just, you know, with us, but with, with each other uh, during this event. It really is one of the prime purposes of this event is for us to network with each other and, and learn more about what we're doing at each other's campuses, what initiatives we have, what lessons learned, what problems we have to sort of brainstorm solutions together. So I hope you'll take those opportunities. And we've built breaks in and, and meals um, to the program so that we can do more of that. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Sorry about that. Um, I wanted to thank the virtual attendees uh, to this um, to this event. We live stream the summit every year, and we record it. And I want to say a special thank you to Jeff Hotchberg for being here uh, and doing that for us every year for many, many years. Do you know how many? It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I want to say, uh, uh, you know, give a shout out to the virtual attendees, um, both those of us here in this room and those of us listening virtually throughout the conference uh, can ask questions of the presenters through Slido. 
and you'll see the information here on the slide. If you go to slido.com and use that hashtag or that particular sli.do, that whole URL, you can get to the, our Slido page and ask questions of, um, of you know, the presenters or any of us. And um, Aaron and our Twitter team will be um, uh, following um, the virtual audience as well as um, uh, live tweeting the event and so I wanted to make a special mention of uh, these folks who are our Twitter team this year. Um, anyone can participate um, by using the hashtag Open SUNY Summit. Um, these folks in particular, you know, raised their hand and said that they would uh, help us live tweet the event. And, um, and so I'm hoping that you will help share information about what you're seeing and hearing and learning here um, uh, through your various social networks. And thank you very much. Can, if you're on the Twitter team, can you raise your hands? Or anyone who, who is planning to tweet the event? Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. Um, for those of us who are here, if you are not yet an Open SUNY Fellow, I'd really like to invite you and encourage you to, um, to join as an Open SUNY Fellow. It's one of the ways that we can um, have communication with you all. We do a number of events and webinars and other types of activities, and so I just want to make sure that you can get on our list, and uh, by joining as an Open SUNY Fellow, you can, we, we will be able to you know, send um, information to you uh, about the different things that we do. So I'm inviting you all to join. Um, so as you may guess, the whole, there's a whole team of people who help in various capacities to put on this event. And I wanted to recognize um, not only the Open SUNY staff and the staff of the CPD, Nancy Motondo in particular, but also the folks who are on my summit uh, check-in team. And so um, these are the folks who are on the team. And if, you're, uh, if you are one of the check-in team, could you please raise your hand just to, so that I know wh where you are? And I just want to thank you very much for your help uh, this year and last year and for all of your advice and suggestions and um, support through the year as we, um, as we plan and frame this event. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, now, is Jeremy in the room? Jeremy, there you are. Okay, Jeremy, I want to talk to you about you now. Um, Let's see if I can get the slide up. So as you know, over the last few years, we have um, used this event as a, an opportunity to collect uh, videos, um, either testimonials on particular subjects, or um, we have uh, had some dedicated video projects that we have um, collected over the last few years. This year, we are targeting um, um, your thoughts and your best practices and your uh, lessons learned regarding the three presences, teaching presence, social presence, and cognitive presence from the community of inquiry framework. We're also including learning presence in that, if you're familiar with that new construct. Um, if you are interested in participating in this project and have something to say, and I know every single person in this room has something to say about one of those presences, um, I would really love to have you sign up to, to shoot a short video uh, talking about you know, one small aspect of this or general uh, aspect of, of this framework um, with Jeremy. And we have a video studio set up um, down the hall towards the elevators and the little kitty corner to the elevators and you can, Jeremy, can you stand up so that they can see who you are? That's Jeremy. And Dan Feinberg is also helping to wrangle um, interviewees. And we have a schedule where you can sign up at the, at the registration desk if you want, or just see one of those, uh, one of those folks uh, to get yourself on the schedule. It's going to be throughout the summit. So when you find a, a moment where you're not doing something and you want to go have a chat with Jeremy, just you know, be sure to do that. We're trying to collect information on each of the indicators and categories of each of the presences. Jeremy, you want to say anything? Um, 
If you have been videotaped in the past and are wondering what happened with those videos, you can go to the Open SUNY YouTube channel and look at our playlists and you will find yourself and many, many, many of your colleagues talking about a whole variety of topics that we have collected over the years. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, links, I want to make sure that you, so you don't have to copy these down, I just want you to know that these links are here um, and that we're using the Open SUNY Summit hashtag. If you have photos and you use Flickr, if you could tag them with Summit 20, then they will come into the slideshow that I've prepared for this event and then we can share, we can collaboratively share those um, uh, those uh, photos. You may have to put them into the Open SUNY um, photo group, uh, but anyway, it, you know, let me know if you if you uh, want to do that, and we can talk you through it. Um, okay. So then the next thing I wanted to mention was some of the badges that are uh, being um, available for this summit. Um, we're gonna, the ambassadors will get um, uh, some badges, the speakers will get badges. There's a workshop on Friday for which there will be a badge and the effective practices will also uh, be receiving um, a badge. Um, so I wanna encourage you to, when you get them, to accept them and then share them with whomever it is that makes sense for you. All right. Um, no, I think that's it. I think that's it for all of my notes. Oh, the last thing I wanted to mention was um, today, please feel free to take a break whenever you want. We're going to have, you know, coffee and all of that um, right out here because we're starting at 10. We're going to go straight through lunch, but feel free um, to, uh, to take a break whenever, whenever you need to. Lunch is going to be at 12.15 and dinner today is on your own. Dinner tomorrow will be here together and I hope that you will all be here for that. Um, I have a very nice, we have a very nice special dinner planned and so I hope you'll be there and be here. And it's snowy so don't go out and get stuck. We're all safe and warm and snug here. There's a fire by the bar so let's hang out. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it for, for this. Um, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to let one of us know. And um, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our first uh, panel presentation today, which is the um, Open SUNY, sorry, yes? Wi-Fi, oh, thank you for asking. Summit 19, lowercase is my understanding. I meant capital S. Okay, okay. Um, and I'm not sure where the SUNY online presentation is. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Jeff, I don't see the mic. Oh, there it is. Hey everybody, how are y'all today? So I'm going to be down here, I wander and I usually use a clicker, but before we start, I'm Marianne Hassan, I'm uh, Chief of Staff in the Provost's Office and I'm Acting Executive Director of the Impact Foundation and Chief Advancement Officer. All right, and everything else in between. Um, before we, and I'm brand new, so I started October 1st and so um, I get the newbie um, excuse, and so I'll be using that frequently. Um, <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge, I, um, uh, you, go, you all know Kim and you know Carrie, but uh, they're part of the online team. Um, a few introductions, so um, we've got a few people who are on the online working group um, in the audience. Could you please stand? So thank you very much. Um, they did a lot of hard work. You'll see some of it up here. Um, and I make sure you talk with them um, in the next few days. Thank you. Um, now a little bit of exercise. Um, could I have all of um, the rep anyone representing a technical um, college or the technical sector please stand up and remain standing? Anyone? Okay. Um, anyone from the comprehensives please stand, remain standing. A little bit more. Community college representatives. 
and um, doctoral institutions. Okay, and I guess system administration is the last group, maybe? All right, and then did I miss? Did I miss? We have, we have a couple of partners here, vendor okay. partners. Okay, so uh, vendor partners down, everybody else up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, look around, look around, y'all. All right, we are SUNY. This is SUNY wide, this is SUNY world. We have to harness this expertise and this experience in order for us to move forward and to be great, okay? So thank you. That's it for the aerobic exercise today. <laughs> All right, so, um, ready? Ready. So all right. oh, we're all yeah. here to hear about this initiative, um, the online initiative, which you guys have known about. And you contributed. Next. So right. um, you know this slide. There's a lot of history. Um, SUNY's been in the online arena for quite some time, even before 94 in its earlier stages. And we know where we have SUNY, um, open SUNY launched in about 14. And then we've been looking at the what next. And that's what this whole thing, this, this is why I'm here today. Um, next, please. Um, you know that we, uh, in 14, open SUNY came, um, came on. And since then, we have over 800 programs. We've got a lot of students who take online. And in a one semester snapshot, we had 183,000 students taking uh, at least one online class as the modality, modality of learning. During that one semester snapshot, however, we only had 26,000 taking fully online courses during that one term. That's only 6%. Um, and that's a low number for us. And that's an important number, as you'll see a little bit later on. Um, but all of our programs really, except one or two, lack scale. Um, so that's one of the things we, we saw. Um, and so one of the things going on um, with the white paper we sent out, I'm, I'm now taking a more um, preemptive approach. Therefore, um, Letterman's top 10 myths. And the people who were closest to 20 may not remember Letterman show, but <laughs> the rest of us do. So um, uh, this initiative will not be mandated. Okay, full stop. Okay, the next one is, is that we're taking over your campuses. No, we're not. Please, no, we're not. Um, uh, this won't benefit my campus. Well, we expect that this is going to have benefit for all of SUNY and for all campuses, maybe some more than others. We'll give you the slides later. Don't worry about that. Um, next, um, our faculty are going to be forced to participate. This is like forced labor. No, that's not going to be the case. This is an opt in program. Um, next. Uh, production costs are more expensive. Well, yeah, production costs are expensive, but when you scale, the end number goes up and the production costs are constant, therefore it goes down. Next. Um, I've done this a few times and had to answer questions, so that's why I'm just hitting them right up front, okay? Um, students won't benefit. You guys are already on the online arena. You know students benefit from having um, online activity. Next. Um, Online education isn't as good as face-to-face. -face. Well, you guys already know that there's great quality on the online arena. I don't have to make this argument with you guys. Um, it's a smoke screen for cutting jobs. No, in fact, I think there's going to be a plus on this, and our CFO is a little worried about that, but we'll deal with that through enrollment. And um, that we're going to remove faculty control from curriculum. No, the faculty are the scholars. They are the experts. They are the ones that are going to drive the content. And without faculty, we don't have, we don't have anything because we, we wouldn't have students. Okay, next thing. And then, uh, oh, some people have said we're going to compromise on quality. Well, that's not going to be on our watch. That's not going to be on this provost or this chancellor's watch. Okay, so um, next two. So you've seen a variant of this um, and what we will and what we won't do. Um, and. You guys are on the online arena, so I'm going to try to uh, go through this a little in a more accelerated fashion than I would people who, like UUP. I had to actually give UUP an, um, a presentation, and um, they're not quite as familiar with this, so I had to walk through everybody. So next, um, we've just so you know, um, 
We have done various presentations to all the constituents. Um, we've met with Student Assembly at least twice. We've met with FCCC, UFS. We've met with the union. We've met with various um, uh, campuses that have asked us for more information. Um, we've met with system administration in the whole building so that we have a procurement as well as finance, as well as student affairs, as well as academic affairs um, up to date. Um, and so this is, this is fun being here because you're in the online community. <laughs> um, you know, we've had to talk to some constituents about um, quality. And again, I don't think I need to go through that uh, with you guys, but instructional design is extremely important, especially with the changes that we're going to need if we're going to go to scale. It's a little different doing a class for 1,000 or 2,000 students or 2,500 students than it is for 250 or even 25. So we acknowledge that. Um, I've, had, I've pulled some literature here and there, and you may be familiar with um, no significant difference. Um, in fact, there may be sig positive significant difference in some of the online uh, courses that we hope to give. Student Assembly's been really, really excited about this initiative. Um, they already like and enjoy what you guys are doing out in the field, but they want more. When we met with Student Assembly, it was just like we were bowled over by their enthusiasm. Um, they are ready to go. They're a standing focus group for us. Anytime we have a question, we can send out a 20-minute webinar and say, anybody who can uh, participate, we've got questions on this. Boom, boom, boom. In 15 minutes, I got this response from Student Assembly when I asked for some personal testimony. And they really, the, the leadership group of Student Assembly really sees online as an, a way to increase accessibility for learners in the state of New York to access college education. Next one. One of our students on that Student Assembly group is an international student who's taken over 15, 15 or 16 MOOC courses. In addition, he's taken four or five, uh, well, he says a couple here, but he's taken online. And I thought this was really pertinent, that the two courses online that he cites here were fabulous experiences for him, so much so that he felt like he had a better experience online than he was having in, inside the classroom. So I think there's a lot of innovation going on in, um, on your campuses, on your online um, courses. So you know we put out an RFI in July before I came and that we had 25 proposals um, or respondents from that. The working group, thank you all, um, did a tremendous job whittling that down. We brought in 13 vendors to do either an online or in-person 40-minute um, presentation, 20-minute questions. Everyone was stopped at 60. And um, at the end of the day, we learned a lot. We learned a lot through that process. We learned about some things that we didn't know. We learned about some things we don't want to do. And, um, but we came down to um, the fact that we knew we needed to have a workshop. So we all got together December 7th, and we purposely discussed um, three scenarios. But before we discussed the scenarios listed in those three bullets, um, I set it up by trying to get everybody to take their swag off and that they were representing SUNY. They weren't representing. Um, their individual campus. And they also had to think about what will SUNY be in 2035? What will SUNY be in 2040? Okay? We can't think about today. We can't think about five years from today. We have to think about long term. Georgia Tech, we'll be seeing them on, um, on Friday. They've already commissioned and finished a task force. They have a 2040 plan. It's published at 70 pages. It's really tight. You can very clearly see where they're going to go. But students are different today than they were when I went to school. Um, universities are going to be a different place in the future, and we have to think towards that, and we have to build towards that, because if we don't, we're going to be left behind. So in the um, scenarios, we broke up. Um, we spent most of the day discussing three scenarios. What if the online initiative went with an OPM? What if the online initiative used one of, uh, used one of our campuses as a backbone? And what if um, system administration, like Open SUNY, or, or you know, 2.0, um, were to take us forward into the 2035, the 2040 plan? Okay. Um, we all know Southern New Hampshire. How many of us sees the advertisements every time we turn on any type of media? 
Um, California systems going after this a big way. Yesterday we heard from University of um, Massachusetts and Amherst, which is a very, very small right, online um, initiative right now. They want to ramp it up, but they're going to do something very different than what we're doing. They're, they're going to have a parallel system. They're actually going to create a degree granting college that's online, but they're going to keep their in this existing initiatives going at the same time. So they're going to have a bifurcated system, a little bit like what Purdue and Purdue Global are doing right now. We don't, we didn't entertain that, um, and we're not, that's not what we're going to be doing. Um, and then Arizona State has a big initiative. Um, they have a big initiative, period. Um, Michael Crow is the president. He's really expanded the university uh, really big time into access. But, and they're in, in the international market where I came from, and um, they market themselves in a big way um, in the Middle East and in other um, parts of the world. In fact, they market themselves so much that their reputation is probably outweighing their international perception of their reputation probably outweighs their delivery of what domestically we would we think of Arizona State as a sister as a sister higher education institution um, next so where are we in terms of the state of New York overall the state of New York is only ranked 11th but as a newbie I thought New York wants to be number one in everything so this really kind of surprised me um, now if you just take what SUNY does um, we're, we're ranked at number 35 or number 36. If you take what our individual campuses do, we're like pretty much off the charts except for our largest um, at Empire State, which does about 5,600, 6,000 students, and we're in the lower 40s. All right, so in aggregate, we're really pretty small here. All right, um, so what we want to do is Next. really, yes, please. These are our programs, our top 25 programs in terms of numbers. And you can see after we go to number five, the numbers drop down. And we're really, we have really pretty small niche programs. They're excellent, but they're small. Now remember I said we only have 26,000 in that one term studying 100% online or fully online. IPED's data says it's exclusive. We've heard from one um, campus that they were concerned about the word exclusive. So we're trying to use the words 100% online learners. Um, so we're looking at can we increase, because we know our student bodies um, or our, our projection of demographics of the graduating high school students is not good throughout the state. All right, so well in Massachusetts we're seeing it, we're seeing it in Vermont as well. Um, so where can we grow? And we think that 100% online learner space is where we can grow, and we think we can grow in the traditional, um, non-traditional non learner, all right? We're also going, we need to respond more efficiently to the market. Um, so we've got large employers that now have um, benefits plans that didn't have this 15 years ago. Walmart, Starbucks, for example, Papa John's, all right? These are companies that are paying their employees to go and get um, advanced training or training that they never had. So we're gonna try to get into that market. We also see, now that we're um, a signature on the NCSARA, um, the reciproc reciprocal agreement, um, National Consortium of State, State Authorization there Reciprocity Agreement. 40, we have leaky virtual borders. So 40,000 New York State residents study in virtual environments to institutions outside of the state. Therefore, they're paying more than our tuition rates. Why? Why? 64 campuses, all of our degree programs, we must not be doing something right. Maybe it's marketing, maybe the degree programs aren't quite right. We don't know, okay? But we've got 40,000 we want to try to claw back, all right? Or a good chunk of those people we should try to claw back. So we went to the chancellor and we gave her the first pitch and she's like, we said we wanted to, we wanted to increase our online, fully online learners by 40,000 and she said that wasn't good enough. So she bumped us up to increasing our 100% online learnings by 80,000. And if we do that system wide, this is a tremendous number in the bottom right corner. When the, the revenues are, it, it's just kind of uh, almost make believe to me. They're huge, they're huge. So yes, it costs a lot, and we're gonna have to invest a lot 
And this isn't all about numbers, but we do have to make sure that the investment isn't a stranded investment and that we're investing state money wisely, okay? So this is um, a really important slide. So what's going to be driving us is strategic program development, enhanced marketing, partnerships and retention and wraparound services. So starting with the strategic program, we want to look for online programs in more in high demand areas. So we want to look at what are y'all offering and what's missing that's strategic, okay? We have a clue about some of those. We're going to seek some help to find others. But just off the top of my head, I know that cyber and decision science is big data, blockchain, they're missing, all right? Uh, clinical research management, clinical research is missing, totally missing, all right? We have some presence in the first one in the cyber and the decision science is not in a, a lot, but we're, we're totally missing that cash cow that top 20 uh, medical centers are giving. We're missing some critical areas in our offering that we have the expertise SUNY wide to do, and why aren't we doing it? Maybe it's just because we didn't have enough core faculty in one campus or another, but we can help bridge that. Um, I'll talk about how we're going to do that in a minute. Um, we have a lot of associate's degrees, a smaller, a, a smaller number of bachelor degrees, and a smaller, even smaller number of masters. So we are missing a lot at the master's degree level, which tends to be a self-pay um, a program or degree um, level in the U.S. We're mi we think we're missing some batch completion programs, AS to BS programs, all right? Um, so we want to take a look at that, and we definitely need to look at the micro-credentialing. So if y'all aren't in, um, aware of the micro-credentialing micro activities, there's quite a bit going on right now. March 22nd, there are 145 people from 45 campuses are coming to um, system for a workshop on that. We had a, a, a meeting with IBM and their micro-credentialing yesterday in the cyber world. And um, this is an area we're going to link with the online, and I think it's going to be um, valuable for our students um, and our learners. Um, we're going to have to, um, the programs that we pull in and, and do in this new initiative, are going to have to be marketed. We're going to have to get out there. We're going to have to, right now there's not a lot of marketing. I'm kind of surprised as a newbie. I don't see a lot in the environment except Southern New Hampshire and Purdue. Um, I don't see a lot of branding out there on for any campuses out in the um, community, never mind uh, nationally or internationally. So we're going to have to go out that and we're, we're going to have to work on getting market strategy. Um, we're going to go after those corporate partners. Um, so I said the Amazons, the Papa John's, the Starbucks, Disney Financial. Look at all the financial houses that are down, um, down in downstate. And they're part of conglomerates. They have huge number of employees worldwide. All right, so we're going to try to tap in, in, into, that, into that corporate space. We're also going to look to see is there a way that we can help with some companies in terms of um, through maybe micro-credentialing, through maybe this online platform, uh, specific types of training. This platform can be extendable. I'm not saying right away, but eventually. Remember I said we have to think 2035, 2040? This new platform could be built out in a way that we could extend to professional education um, or continuing education and using our micro-credentialing or even our regular credit-bearing courses. So, this is, this is something that we really need to get into. Now, adult learners are different than 18 to 22 year olds. We know that. We know that online learning is different than face-to-face -face learning. We have to have wraparound services, and we, have to ha we can't just play lip service to it. We've heard people from the working group. We've heard people from feedback. We know from campuses. We have to do that. So we also know that we have to have instructional design support. Like I said, teaching 25 or 30 students is different in terms of um, the, how you design your course and, and uh, pedagogical approaches you take. So we're going to have to um, create some services for that. You guys know we, we've got right now, this goes to, again, why are we doing it and the extendability. We really do have to serve our um, workforce. Um, and when I graduated from college in the Reagan era, there were no jobs. There was nothing. There was nothing around. 
Yesterday I heard from IBM, they, have, they see that we have 50,000 people a year. We're, higher education is producing 50,000 people a year um, in the IT world that they're looking at for 500,000 jobs. Are you kidding me? I, I even last night in driving here was thinking maybe I should take one of those blockchain classes <laughs> and, or one of those badges and see what it's like. I mean, if I were a student and I had any kind of technological interest, oh my God, go to the IBM free website and start doing those badges and you can get a quote unquote new collar job. So there are jobs out there, but there are people who aren't trained for them and we have an opportunity to fill that. So what are our next steps? Um, we're going, we're, we just got the online, um, online comment period ended last Thursday, a week ago. Thank you all for um, comments. We have a gazillion of them condensed down into 245 lines, which we're trying to look at and say, okay, what's actionable? What was just a comment? What needs to be put off in terms of, yes, that's one of our work streams. And we're gonna finalize the white paper, okay? We are right now trying to find budget um, and we're moving forward. Um, we are working with, we've already been working with um, the state in terms of economic development to try to find support for the initiative in terms of budget, but also for um, the industrial contacts. Um, we have been working with Amazon um, and it, they came directly through ESD and ESD considers this as part of them, themselves as a partner in this, okay? Um, one of the things we did is um, we wanted, at the end of the workshop, we wanted to uh, make sure we understood, we, we wanted to come up with principles or values that are going to drive this project. And then we brought that, then without showing the students the list, we asked them for the values. And they came up with all the values that the adults came up with, but they added to it. And so this is our list, it's maybe a little bit too long and there might be some redundancy but it gives you an idea of where we're going and what we think the University of the Future will need to incorporate. So we're using these to try to drive what we're doing. Next. So this is something that if, um, most people haven't seen. So one of the things that we would like to do on a uh, in terms of the technology and the platform is create something like what the New York State um, uh, IT department did for businesses. Um, and years ago, um, if you, not even too many years ago, I guess even two years ago, if you wanted to start a business, you as an individual had to figure out what you had to do, where you had to go, and what agencies you had to visit, and you filled out forms that were redundant. 90% of the data was the same, okay? So it was you in the middle just trying to figure it out. So what they did is they turned it around, and the citizen became the information resource, it went into workflow and the system was smart and it, 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 it moved your application um, throughout the system. So, can you go back? So right now, our system is, student is in the middle. I want to do a AS or a BS in accounting. I go online, if, there's, if they know about Open SUNY and Ranku, they go on there and then Ranku pops them up and then they can do that. But they still have to go and kind of figure out, right? They have to figure out and go to different, different websites. Well, what if, they, if we turned it around and they come onto one portal and, and we push them to you and in a more effective way? And, and we do everything, you know, all of the dirty work is on the back end and the student has a better experience on the front end. So we're looking at trying to create something like this that will benefit everybody out there and doing online. Not just online, but if the student decides, oh, I want to go face to face and go somewhere else, sure, that's a win, right? But this is a real, um, real opportunity for us to kind of switch things around and make sure that the student and the interested, really the interested learner is in the driver's seat and all of our problem, you know, all of our bulky problems in the backside don't become the student's problem. So um, I'm going to stop here because I, I would rather spend the time. Um, in dialogue with you all. So, any questions? Yes. Do, and do we, we should and run you with tell, the mic, right? Could you tell me um, who you are and what institution you represent, please? Before you go, I'm coming with the mic, sorry.
Okay, is it on? Okay. Um, I'm Brenda Battleson White. I'm at SUNY Buffalo. Great. And we, this is all fantastic. Everything that you're showing here, and um, and I'm really on board because we've been teaching fully online in our program uh, in information science. We've been fully online for. I think like five years now, but we've been teaching online since 1998. The, the concerns that I have is, you know, at the beginning here you had everybody stand up and we mm -hmm. are all SUNY. Mm -hmm. Our funding models do not promote that kumbaya kind of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I know. And, 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 and it's not just between oh. campuses, but it's even within the different decanal units and departments of the campuses. So. Can we change the funding model or somehow, so, yes. is that going to be considered into this? Yes. So, um, well, let me answer the question. Uh, let me. Okay. Um, I'll just tell you my second question, too, yep. was that um, I think marketing is going to be key oh, to this huge. because I do a lot of recruitment and I do a lot of looking at our, our data of our, our applicants and where they've heard about our programs. And, you know, Southern New Hampshire has these heartstring tugging kinds of things well, that, that, a, that yeah, resonate with dogs. people. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, let me re uh, start from the bottom up. Uh, marketing, absolutely, but it has to be smart marketing. It's not the old fashioned marketing. Okay. And we have limited dollars. My money trees haven't bloomed yet. I don't know about you, but look at outside. Nothing's bloomed yet. Okay. <laughs> so we have to be really careful. All right, so tomorrow um, uh, the provost will be here and he'll, he'll um, give a very short presentation, but in that I hope to uh, show you some of our first marketing attempts, which hopefully, yes, it will have its own heartstrings. <laughs> um, but so noted. Um, one of the things on the partnerships, um, those four major pillars about partnerships that I didn't say, and I should have said, sorry was one of the things we'd like to do um, is try to use, use the SUNY strength. And we've heard from several people that, oh, you know, I tried doing a program cross campus and it's too heavy of a lift. I, I couldn't get it done, all right? It's too heavy for an individual faculty member, for a department chairman, and the budget models, you know, it's just like <sighs> way too much red tape. So this is the other thing that um, the, the group at System Administration is going to take on. All right. So we have some ideas, but we want ideas from you all. We have a lot of expertise in the system. We have a lot of gems, but we need to figure out how to pull them together in a tiara that's not given anywhere else. Okay. With that is going to come agreements, the and with the agreements, teaching, you know, things are going to have to change. The provosts here are probably sitting here going, ah, oh, this is going to be really hard in terms of workload and credit on campus and APT, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to have to work through that because if we don't, if we don't pull together, we're going to be left behind and we can't afford to be left behind. So budget models, very definitely. Um, we, um, I've seen the numbers. Um, at Buffalo from um, our blockbuster um, blockchain superstar um, faculty member. I know what you're talking about. Um, I don't know how it's going to be different, but we have a, one of our work streams is going to be budgeting. It's not just what the budget is, but what's the budget distribution. Now, in this, in this model that we're going to promote, we're going to be taking the burden on, on some of these big things. We're going to, for the programs that are in there, we're going to do the marketing, not the campus. Or, well, the campus should continue to do, you know, we'll figure out what campus does in terms of marketing. But the big dollar stuff, we're going to do. The infrastructure, the IT side, we're going to do. So there are going to be costs that we're doing. So we're having to do budget modeling, and we're looking at when can we have a break-even point, when can we see things that, so revenue, it's not a stranded investment, so we're not putting, you know, millions of dollars down a hole that's not going not gonna to work. We're going to have to have some escape valves too. Um, so we got to stay tuned, but we know that and we've heard you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, Camille Carlson, Suffolk County Community College. I have two questions. Sure. The first one has to do with micro-credentialing and then that conversion potentially into credit as it relates to competency-based education. Sure. So is that in the model? Yes. And the second question has to do with the new GDPR um, yes. compliance as it relates to international students. Yeah, we're aware of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so micro-credentialing, uh, great example. Um, IBM and cybersecurity. Um, they have all kinds of micro-credentials. So if um, Wake Technical Community College in my home area, of Research Triangle Park in North Carolina, has partnered with IBM, um, they co-created um, curricula. And in that curricula, they use a lot of the, I, IBM develops some, they develop some. And a student goes through the curriculum, and as they pass through, they accumulate IBM badges that are through Credly, OK? So Credly is one of the two vendors that most of our um, campuses use. Um, and um, the student will have that credential as well as the credit bearing, OK? And those credentials stack. Um, so that's one way of using micro-credentials. If for some reason life happens and the student doesn't complete, the student still has value because they can go out and with those um, stacks with IBM or other vendors, they can get jobs even without a degree. So it's called the new collar. So um, IBM gave an example of a woman who couldn't find a job six months, 12 months. She went started, I don't know how she found out about the IBM website. She started going through and doing more and more of the credentials. She ended up getting a job at Microsoft because she presented her credentials that were IBM badges and they knew the quality standard. That's a commercial example. I'm not saying that's the entire example. Say um, we have this blockchain superstar. We probably have many of them on your other campuses, but I'm saying this specific one because she's taught over what, I don't know, 30,000? It's a, it's a huge number of students worldwide on a MOOC. And it's a huge number, right? So what if those students, and most of the students are from India, second is from the US, third is from the United Arab Emirates, where I just set, spent the last seven and a half years. So these students from, say, student from the US took, took her blockchain six modules and, and say, um, Albany or Binghamton or Geneseo, whoever has a business school. OK, I'm sorry, I don't know everybody. So. Business school, SUNY Business School X sees that and they present that and they go through the uh, a, a PLA, a prior learning assessment and say, huh, you know, you have those credentials. We see it was from, um, it was given on Coursera by a SUNY faculty member and we've seen the course curriculum. We're going to give you X amount of credit. Now, um, Empire State is very, has a lot of experience in doing PLA. Right? So we can learn from them in how to do this. Or maybe the student says, huh, they go to, and they're at Empire State, and they've, they've got, I don't want to simplify it, but it sounded like you guys, you guys do this so often that it's going to become a more frequent um, activity. But our students see it as an opportunity to get credentials that are good for them for other reasons, not just for the um, credit. But if we can convert it, or filter it into somehow our courses, or in doing our courses and getting credit, they get credentials that help them outside. That's a service to our citizens. Only two questions? I can't believe it. Yeah. Hi, Brent Murphy, uh, College of Environmental Science and Forestry. Um, so going back to your um, the New York State business model analogy, and uh, I appreciate you presented this also to us at uh, the, to the Doodle Group. Um, and so, right. in the that, in that analogy, you, when you presented here, you kind of talked about that more as the student experience. But I think when we talked last, it was the, the analogy really is that the the citizen is is the college. Because this is about the, you know the analogy is is going through all the administrative hurdles to. Mm -hmm. um, to get new programs and to the, develop these new models. And I think when you were presenting that, you know, we talked about NYSED and SUNY already has a great role helping us navigate the NYSED side of this. But um, 
what are what is going on with middle states because that is the other major administrative hurdle that as we try to start doing new models across campuses mm -hmm. and even like micro credentialings like tying things around certificates that a lot of us might have to negotiate with middle states going through changing our accreditation a little bit um, so what what sort of efforts are there working with the middle states Do you so um, <laughs> this, I look at Meg because we actually have a middle states commissioner um, in our midst, um, and so um, you know I I think right. yep. So could could uh, could you a talk about that to it, but also let me add to that. Yeah. I believe maybe I'm wrong, okay. But middle states is an institutional, not a spe degree specific, right? Accreditation. Um, so the degree specific is with um, SED. And middle states is for the campus. Right. Right. That's only get to specific types of degrees. So like in order for if you want to like start sharing across campuses and have campuses say put together undergraduate certificates, if you have not been approved by middle states, that's that's another step in the process. Right. Well cross so yeah. the let me keep building yeah. to it so you can yeah. address the bolus. Um so if we do, say, an undergraduate certificate, or even we do a degree, and we have two, let's just make it simple, two campuses, right? Um, we can agree up front where the, um, where the degree is going to be from or whether it would be both. But an easy way to, would be, um, we all know, say, let me just go with philosophy, right? Because we know they're probably very, one of the lower enrollment numbers on our campuses is philosophy, right? So say two campuses team up, and then this way they can offer a philosophy degree from both campuses or even one. But their faculty, it's important to have faculty from philosophy on our campuses, full stop, right? So the students can either cross, we could do it through cross registration, and then it's just beaming faculty in for four courses, if you will, right? Um, or we can do a totally virtual and have a virtual faculty, and so, yeah. What does middle states think yeah. about that? So, you know, I actually take your point about middle states. So, you know, just like with state ed, you know, there can be slowdowns. Um, I chaired the Substantive Change Committee, which is the committee where a lot of this stuff comes through. Um, I would say that, um, you know, the, the accreditation agencies are under fire. And one of the reasons they're under fire is because of working to work with innovation. We. Empire State did get a competency-based program approved through middle states. Now, it took a little while, but, but we, did, we did get it through. Um, middle states is doing experimentation with business partnerships and campus partnerships. So in figuring out how if people can get aid, you know, there are three schools that are doing coding combined with, you know, campus programs. So they're, they're trying to, to to reduce, they're trying to understand what are the barriers to doing those types of crossover things that cause cause angst to to okay. institutions. So I, you know, I think if you know, in the, you know, the power of SUNY, if if there are those kind of things that are crossover that we're seeing trouble with, you know, I think the system could work with communicating with with middle states about that. You know, because I, I I think there's pressure for for there being more innovation. And that's partially why there are people like me who become commissioners so that we can make this a little right. easier all and, the way through. And I, I, I think I have to, two points too, is that this ty that's a complicated type setup and it would be de novo. That's not the first out of the block. We, we, <laughs> we, can't, we, can't, uh, we can't bite into that right away or we'll bite into it but just nibble. And, but that's, that's gonna be on our, you know, maybe yeah. after we get up and running. So we're also thinking about, we've got immediate, which is now, and we have maybe a year and a half from now. And then I'm thinking that next, you know, after we kind of get some things running, the first part is, is right now, what are we gonna do for September? Can we do anything in this new, you know, this new yeah. paradigm in September? The chancellor's saying, tell me the programs, now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy. Um, so, you know, we, we're going to try to identify some programs that we could have in a pilot phase and pilot some of these ideas, like 
does the marketing, if we do this type of marketing, does it move the needle? Yes or no? Were we wrong? So then that's why we're not, we're not saying, okay, we're not going out with $100 million. Well, again, money tree. Where's my money? <laughs> we don't, we're not doing a $10 million or $15 million campaign on TV commercials and finding out that they didn't work. You know, we're not going to go there. So we, we're going to do some baby steps first, take on some bigger steps, and then the more complicated and maybe fun stuff um, is going to have to be last. So, for example, artificial intelligence. Okay, um, Camille and I and, and Paul were talking about AI, right? AI is here to stay, and we don't have any degrees in AI. Zip, nada. So, and that's associates and bachelors or masters online, all right? You can get AI a little bit through a variety of mechanisms, mechatronics, robotics, um, decision sciences, right? But not AI proper, all right? So that kind of thing may be partnerships, who knows? Um, foreign languages, all right? If you all, uh, foreign languages are under stress. A lot of the humanities are under stress in our campuses. What can we do to help, help with this stress problem? They're valuable, they're valuable faculty. Yeah. It's valuable to our students and our, our campuses to have the humanities, a viable humanities. Is, is the online platform and maybe some virtual connections possible way of us continuing and maintaining that, right? So uh, we got to kind of think in, in, in stages, stages on, on this. So the, the only thing I was going to um, add, um, and thanks Meg um, for commenting, is you know as we figure out what these new scenarios look like, you know I, I think that's part of the role of the program office at SysAdmin as well to help us represent where is SUNY going and what is SUNY looking at, um, and to advocate um, and help us facilitate those conversations with middle states. So um, you know I think they're an important piece of the mix as well. And, and that's part of that heavy lift. Yep. Okay, so I also should say um, next um, 14th, whatever that day is next week, um, we're doing a presentation to the HR Association, the Human Resource Professionals. Yep. Um, the next day we're doing um, admissions and registrars. All right, so we really are trying to hit all of the constituents in this. We know we're going to have to tackle the financial aid. Um, so. We're really trying to pull people in, and we're, this is a dynamic process. So this slide deck, I don't know if you were here when I loaded it on the, uh, on the computer, you must have seen four or five um, decks, and each one has a date because it changes. So it will change tomorrow based on what we hear today. Um, you know, we've got it, we are taking questions, we're learning from you, we're learning what's important and taking note. So. I don't know if there are other questions, we'll take other questions, but I, I um, want to make a comment maybe while you're thinking about your questions, which is that, um, you know, Marianne is here all three days of the summit. Um, Todd will be here, the provost, tomorrow. Brian Digman, um, our chief information officer. Hank Bennett, who's the deputy to the chief operating officer. Well, they will all be here tomorrow through Friday. Um, they do want to hear um, from our campuses. Um, so I just want to say um, it's really tremendous that they're spending the amount of time with us that they are. They have all been fully engaged in the conversations, in the RFI process, in the workshop, in the white paper, with the SUNY Online Working Committee. Um, they've met with the Open SUNY leadership team. They're investing a tremendous amount of time. And uh, to me, that is unprecedented um, in my time at SUNY um, for that level of SUNY leadership to be engaged in what we're all doing in online learning. So, um, you, know, uh, you know, usually, you know, you hear from Carrie and I um, in this, but really just want to thank Marianne for, um, for, for being here and for, for sharing um, the vision for where we're headed, because well, I think I'm so excited. I asked the um, working group members to stand so that you would know who was there um, representing the online folk. And in addition, we Gwen, Gwen's here from UFS um, and one of our trustees too. So um, if you've got questions, it's not just me and Carrie and Kim. It's, That's right. That's it's, right. It's all of us, please. Yep. But anything else? I can't believe I'm not, I, really? Marianne, there's a comment in the Twitter uh, stream from Chrissy. 
Mitchell um, from... Chrissy's here. Oh, there she is. Hey, Chrissy. I, but all of a sudden I was hearing this voice. Thank you. Um, I'm Chrissy Mitchell from Dutchess Community College. Um, I just want to, and I, I've said this at the doodle meeting as well, so um, it's sure. this, the same type of thing. I just want to make sure that, and I know that there are community college members that were on the working group. I still want to make sure that community colleges are strongly considered in this um, model yes. because I feel that um, one of the things that we talked about in the last, when we when you talked to Doodle was about campus partnerships, working with other community colleges. And I thought about that a little bit. And then I think about the fact that we are in competition with each other. We are having a lot of difficulty with enrollments at the moment. Um, if you look at the community college sector, that's where the enrollments are going into the, yeah. the bowl. And my question is, I know that there's intellectual reasons to make campus partnerships, but the cynical reason in me is that why would we partner when we can have all of the enrollments instead of having to share them between um, campuses? And I think those types of things need to be considered mm -hmm. when we want to include the community colleges in this model. Because I see a lot of stuff about that the, um, the campus centers can get into. I see a lot of stuff that the four-year colleges can get into, but I feel that they're so we're still getting not as much information for the two-year colleges at the moment. Well, so um, so some of that input will uh, mechanisms for input will become clear tomorrow. So um, I know the weather is conducive for you just to hunker down here, so you'll be back tomorrow. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will have some more information on how all the campuses can um, um, consider. Um, consider a role academically in this. But I'm going to throw this a little bit back on, on, on you all. Um, you know your faculty. You know your expertise. What, what are we missing? Where are the holes in, our, in what we're offering? We've got business pretty well covered on, in, in for most respects, right? You know, I, I've mentioned some of those big strategic ones. Maybe we're missing something. All right, clean energy is also um, up there, um, and there are community colleges involved in the clean energy initiatives. There was a, there's a, a competition going on for SUNY to co-fund three clean energy um, big research centers, and they had to collaborate, they had to have cross-campus, and they had to have an education component. Before all the reviews, the reviews are being done now, we're separate and outside of that, but we've already looked at each one of those proposals and their education um, proposal. So whoever, whoever gets awarded this, these, uh, through this initiative, we know what they were planning and so we can see if there's any room in that, on, we know who has some online interest. But do you have any things, any idea where we could pull faculty with expertise together? All right, so we have a couple of ideas that no one else in the, there are very few people in the world giving a degree in a, a very specific business area with a sector um, selected for, special, for a specialty. I'm not gonna say what it is. This is, I can tell you individually, but we're being uh, streamed live here and it wouldn't be fair to the, any of the, uh, the campus with that specialty, all right, or the campuses with the specialty, all right? But, are we missing some of these natural, like, oh, really? We should have done that. We have, we have better faculty than XYZ who's doing this. They're a poser. We, you know, we've, got to, we've, we've got to harness who we, uh, think about who we have, right? And how can we collectively put this together? Maybe, it, maybe it's all on your campus, but nobody thought about it before. Or again, the intra-campus issues are too big. Well, maybe we can do that lift for you, right? So maybe it's you know a couple of um, community colleges getting together and doing something, mm -hmm. or I don't know. But we've got we've got to harness our expertise in ways that we did not do before, and thinking about it in a very non-traditional sense. But noted, we understand um, the backup slides on the slide deck are the enrollment data. I know what. I know what they look like. You know, you know the, the other thing, Christy, which you, you know I've said before, is that I think even just with making the pathways from, okay, from two-year to four-year clearer and promoting 
programs with that full pathway, I think that is going to help the community colleges with current online programs. So I think there are multiple opportunities here for the community colleges, um, and, and, and I think here that's going to become a little bit more clear. This is at the risk of redundancy. And you are? My name is Sherry, I'm sorry, my name is Sherry Chibangu, and I'm with Monroe Community College in Rochester, New York. Yes. Um, I hear your point, but we're not in a fight with each other. I'm echoing the point that was made concerning that we need to find ways to work together. When I think of SUNY, uh, taking a stand to say, we're going to do the back work for you. We're going to do the marketing for you. That takes a lot off the table. And so if we can just purpose it in our mind that, that we will work together and find those, op those areas of opportunities as an institution, we're going to be stronger. Uh, so I'm, I'm motivated. I'm excited. Thank you. Anything else? Whoa. Uh, I'm Linda Ryder from Hudson Valley Community College in Troy. I'm just wondering how the Pathways initiatives um, are at the community colleges are fitting into the larger picture of this. Um, they seem to be two different directions. So in, in that, I know on our campus, there's a lot of concern. You asked like what our faculty are thinking. Our faculty mm -hmm. are very concerned about the elimination of quote unquote boutique courses, uh, most of which are humanities, languages, um, different kinds of literature courses because they don't directly uh, feed into a career path. So that's, that's what the faculty are concerned about. Do you, you wanna respond to that? Yeah. Hey. Go on. So, um, uh, I, f I don't like having my back to people, sorry. Yeah, no, that's why I moved on. <laughs> um, so one of the interesting conversations that I've had with several of you over the last few years is, um, you know, when we talk about courses in the humanities, things you might think of as gen ed, liberal, liberal arts, you know, we think that those are not, um, you know, it's either that or we're, or we're teaching people skills for jobs. And it's an either or. And I actually don't think it's an either or. When you talk to, um, employers, when you talk to people in the world today, I think everybody acknowledges that we need people who are better citizens, we need people who are better at teamwork, at communication, at critical thinking. I really don't actually think it's an either or and I think one of the things we do really well at SUNY is all of that. And so I think, I, I, I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure um, what, where that concern comes from and maybe maybe it's in our language and how we talk about it because we know about the workforce but the workforce actually needs those skills that come from the courses that we take in the liberal arts and the uh, and the gen ed courses well, and I should have said too so one of the things we learned from one of our conversations um, uh, with one of the deans at um, one of the colleges on one of our larger campuses is that they're having problems with the fully online bachelor degree programs, not with taking transfer credit from an associate degree into that campus, but with electives, not having enough electives for the student. And the electives are in either the social science or humanities. And so it is something that we're thinking about. Can we use this space to serve what you guys are doing on, in your existing programs to provide more electives for your existing programs. So this is, this is more cross-campus collaboration um, on the platform. So this is something else um, we're tossing around. I just wanted to comment to Christine's comment earlier, and I know that for some people it would feel like it'd be competition, but we all have lowering enrollments, or many of the campuses have lowering enrollments. And I don't think this is about competition with students that are there right now. It's about capitalizing on a large population of students that nobody in SUNY gets. 
and that you weren't going to have otherwise, and you didn't have the money to market for or even create the programs for, so you were never going to have them. And this is an opportunity to expand those lowering enrollments by partnering with everybody together. And that was just kind of my take on it. Thank you. Um, well said. <laughs> and, but, you know, we do recognize that. We're, I, we want to have a net increase. We don't want to have a, a, a zero-sum game, right? Um, and we want to put everybody on the best foot we can. And so even if, even if we end up just the, in the first phase, it's just hopefully it's not. But even if it's, we just see impact from um, increased marketing, smart marketing, you know, kid marketing, um, kid marketing. <laughs> you know, these kids are all about the, these mobile devices. Next, they're going to have implants. You know, maybe we need to think that way. What is that next? Okay, so um, we really are conscious of that, and thank you for both of your comments. We, one final question, and then we're going to have to um, wrap up. But um, um, and it's over here, Larry. Sorry, um, but Marianne again is going to be around. Sorry, Larry. I'm stealing your last question, Thunder. <laughs> this is Danielle O'Brien from Alfred State. So one of the things I think you were asking about challenges, and as a campus, we sort of need to start thinking about how we're going to support these students. So at the SUNY level, there I'm hoping, and we've talked about, there will be student supports put in place and that we'll have some of those um, opportunities to leverage, really, at the SUNY level. But as a campus, we also need to start thinking about how we're going to leverage our concierge on our campus, how we're going to create that full service, um, maybe cross training, and starting to do some of that legwork early on now so that then we can hopefully be ready when this happens. So it's a lot of pre-thinking at the campus level and thinking about how we can actually set ourselves up to maximize this. So I just hope that other campuses are really thinking about how we can get ready so that when this does happen and we have that opportunity that if you want to engage, you can really do that. And I'll just um, comment on that, that we are actually, you know, thinking a lot about the student supports and what what can we do centrally to support students through the experience, um, you know, f not just from a, is it, a, is it um, you know, is the, does the technology work well and is, is, are they not burdened by the administrative processes, but, but also from the, like, how are we making sure that they are not dropping out and that we're not losing them. It's going to be really important to us that students affiliate with their campus, mm -hmm. right? So it's not just that they're going to enroll in SUNY Online, they're going to be enrolled in a campus. So I think there's going to have to be really close um, coordination and partnership with the campuses to make sure that they um, have that um, uh, um, those elements of the campus that are unique to those campuses that, that are going to help them connect with you um, and they know that they're a, an Alfred State student. Um, but, but there's a lot still that we can do centrally, I think, to, um, to support students and help make it easier for campuses to scale. Okay, um, I know that we have the um, uh, next session um, that should be starting soon, so um, Alex, I think we're just gonna turn it back to you. Thanks. Thanks very much, and as Kim said, Marianne and others from the Provost staff are gonna be here um, throughout the conference, and so please um, feel free to think of additional questions and ask them um, as we are all here hanging out together for the, uh, for the week. Um, I wanted to ask Aaron to come up and set up. We're not, we don't have an actual schedule break, but as we set up, we're going to have a little bit of time. So please take, you can take this opportunity to go get a little coffee, to do whatever you need to do, and we're going to start back up in very, very shortly. So don't go too far. Thank you, everybody. And for the, are we still on? For the virtual audience, we're aware that there's a challenge with the um, with the audio, and I've alerted um, uh, Nancy, who will be talking to the hotel to see if there's anything that can be done with the network. Thank you very much, and we'll be back in maybe about five minutes. Thank you. So, Jeff.